All right, video number three of the new 2023, or at the end of 2023, um, PowerShell stuff. Basically just showing my folders as a sysadmin over the course of 13 years at the last place. Uh, of all the scripts I wrote, not all of them, but a good majority of them, um, and why I needed them or why I felt I needed them and how they helped. So uh, if you're looking for the other ones, you can find them in the PowerShell playlist up here. and. Uh, Moving on. All right. So we left off at the Get Teams total, not Microsoft Teams, but um, it was a health challenge situation. Oop. And next one up, we got Get You Logged. I don't recall. I think it's something to do with who's logged on into a server on certain days. I think maybe I was troubleshooting something where um, I wanted to find out if a particular user was logged in and when on uh, on like a vendor supported server. I think that might've been what that was. Uh, let's see, next up, get update status. Uh, I believe that had something to do with, and I may have talked about it earlier, but um, had to do with getting what the status of the Microsoft Windows patches updates for a particular server or servers. What else? Get uptime. Okay, this one I might, I think I mentioned in a previous video that uh, a lot of times I, I want to see what the uptime is on a server. There's a million ways to different to do it, but typically I always have PowerShell up and running, and I just type get dash cd uptime, and I prefix my verb part of the name with cd for Chris Davis, so that way I can um, just tab through. And I know I mentioned it before. I can just tab through. If I go get dash cd and tab through, I, I get all my my important or Frequently used commands showing up through tab complete, but get uptime, and I'll show the other version of it uh, later, but this is basically it. You just type in get uptime computer name, and you could either do a list of names, you could do comma separated, and pipe it through um, from another command, etc. Comes in pretty handy. Use it all the time, all the time. Get users with comma. I was probably doing something with... Uh, AD and pulling out all user accounts that had a display name that could contain a comma and I don't remember why oh because we I remember now um, I wanted to well, it was a hospital convince the hospital we had last name comma first name and um, we wanted to switch that to first name space last name so I was pulling out any of them that still had that after some other PowerShell scripting to, to convert them all over um, worked well. What else? Import Paycom to AD. This one is the big one. This is the one that, um, again, these are just copies of them. They're not actually, I didn't run them in production from my folder here. Uh, this is just for me to test, play around, break it, etc. But um, this one, we got a new HR system. Uh, we wanted to take an export daily from that HR system. And if HR said, hey, this employee's new name because they got married is blah, blah, blah. Then, um, or you know, maybe they they change from employee, active employee to a terminated employee, etc. I would take all that data, and then I would um, every day the script would import all those changes into AD, and uh, we'll have a good track of that. And I don't want to show that right now because um, there's some things I need to blank out and change in there. So if you want to see more about that, let me know. I probably will end up showing it anyways, but let me know if there's um, anybody that wants to see that process. It could be written much better, I know, so if you see the code, you probably gonna look at it and go, why'd you do it that way? And whatever. Uh, next up, mount volume shadow, cop shadow copy. Uh, at one point we were using shadow copy, and I don't know why I have this. I really don't remember. Um, so let's pretend it doesn't exist, or if there's a need for it, let me know. Move files by prefix. Okay, so we used to use batch scripts and PowerShell scripts to automate all the FTP file transfer process. In the healthcare industry, there's a lot of FTP in going out to external vendors, going to other systems that are within the org, etc. We used, it was manageable at one time, but as we went through a few different EMR migrations and just kept adding more and more um, file processes that need to happen it became unmanageable and i'm spending too much time trying to troubleshoot where a problem lies if a file didn't end up where it needed to end up 
Uh, we ended up going with a, an enterprise solution, and I can talk about that if anybody's interested. And um, uh, I don't want to show this at the moment, but if you're interested in this, let me know, because I have to gather up uh, a couple other files that pertain to this as a config file and everything. So basically what it would do is this part of it would look at a prefix of a file name within a directory. If it found one of the files that are configured to look look at, it would take it and it would we'd put a destination in the config file as well. So this file with a prefix of money would end up going to the bank, I don't know, or some folder. Um, and we had a big file that had a bunch of different configs. It worked great, but became unmanageable. Next up, ping sub, uh, subnet. Basically, you just put, if you wanted to see what is alive out there currently on the subnet, on a particular subnet, you just put, uh, uh, let's see, it's probably ping subnet. Yeah, ping subnet, and then you add in the subnet parameter in the command, and then it'll, it'll test the connection to see if there's anything live um, going through these different numbers of subnets. Uh, so, what else? What else? What else? Posh P A I G Master is something I probably downloaded from the internet to test, or, or um, maybe there's some oh, examples. There's probably some good stuff in there. I don't remember. Remove old files. Okay, so when you have like backup jobs, always creating a backup. So, we had some Linux systems that were creating backups every day uh, to a network share. And over time, those files get large and unneeded at some point because they're too old anyway. So you can just add this to a, um, a task schedule job and say, okay, this path or this UNC path or this folder, whatever it is, network share, I want to only keep the last 10 days. And then it'll go through every, every time it runs and delete. Any, any files that are older than those particular days. Helpful and still used to this day. Rename files, same thing. I mean, it is what it is. It probably is a batch rename. I have no idea. Oh, this is from, from one of the FTP processes. Basically, there was a manual process where the state of Illinois, there's no automated way to gather these Medicaid remit files. And so somebody was manually downloading them and putting them into a folder. And they weren't named properly for the destination folder, uh, wherever we were sending them. They needed them named a certain way. So this thing, all it did is it, whenever it ran, it would take anything that had this part of the name uh, of the file name had this in part of the file name. It rename it and prefix it with il, um, and then uh, w whatever the rest of it is, because that's what they wanted. They needed il and then whatever the name was. Uh, that's that. But there's a lot of those kind of things out there that are just doing different files, but still used to this day. Uh, reports, this was just a folder, uh, like a temp folder, probably running some of my reports out of, like, okay, to get my ping results, uh, just when I was testing or something happening. Uh, get Cadwell status report, this was going and checking to make sure that there was a process running uh, on this particular server, and it would just log it. So it was just a kind of a dump directory. Search GPO for string. Now, this was extremely helpful uh, at one point. It's been a long time since I used it, but over time, when you're going through different sysadmins, you're going many, many years and just not a really good standardization from the beginning for naming all your group policy objects. Um, comes a lot of times where I'm like, okay, I know there's a group policy that does this setting or, or changes this or that. Well, if, if you don't keep the naming standard standard <laughs> then it's hard to remember that and even like ones that i've written before i couldn't even remember what i named them so trying to look through hundreds of policy objects it was impossible it took so much time so this would go out and i don't remember which one works which version this would go out and um, let you just run the command or run it and then pop in a, um, whatever string you want to search for. So if you know it has something to do with O3CC5, maybe you just search for O3CC5 and it'll list all of them that come up with that name or that include that name. Very helpful. Uh, when you really need it, you need it. Uh, otherwise, I rarely used it. Uh, service status probably is what it is. I have no idea why I have it. Maybe I was just 
Oh, <laughs> didn't even have anything in there, so I should just delete that. Let's just delete it now. And oh yeah, a little trash can down here. Set Citrix prefix. Okay, so this one, <laughs> this one, I did a ton of testing and research and and trying to get something to work. I think I'll save this one for its own video because it. It was a lot of work. Ended up not even needing it anyways after months of working on this. But um, yeah, so I'll save that one. Uh, I think I'll just probably stop here and we'll continue on in the next video.